Good morning. It's 830 on Wednesday, August 21st. I'm Desiree Frazier. This is Mississippi Edition on MPB Think Radio. On today's show, Democratic delegates at the National Convention talk about their enthusiasm over the Harris Walls presidential ticket and what the party needs to do to win in November. Then we speak with the state epidemiologist about viral illnesses, a global health emergency, and protecting yourself. Plus, a company that collects your information was hacked. Now what? We have some tips on protecting your privacy and credit. This is Mississippi Edition on MPB Think Radio. Forty delegates from Mississippi are in Chicago this week for the Democratic National Convention. Today marks the halfway point. On Monday, President Joe Biden gave a speech that reflected on his legacy and passed the torch to Harris. Mississippi House Minority Leader Robert Johnson of Natchez speaks with our Will Stribling about how the convention is going so far. Everybody keeps talking about joy, and it, there is joy, but there's so much substance. People are finally able to talk about what they want to see happen and what's important to them. And, and you know, to their credit, all the speakers and the presidential and vice presidential candidates, you know, everybody spoke to the issues that concern America. President Biden gave essentially his farewell speech to the party and America. Um, um, what did you think of that speech? You know, it was nearly an hour and, you know, he touted his accomplishments, attacked Trump and, and passed the, the torch to Harris. Um, I've, I've been listening to President Biden for a while. And, uh, you know, and a lot of times he talks and he makes a speech. He talks about what he's done and what's going on and, you know, what, what he prefers to see happen. He talks about and, and rightfully so. He talks about what, you know, he talks like a leader. But last night he talked about he talked as a team. He talked about the Democratic Party and the leadership in the House and the Senate. And he talked about the things that he and Vice President Harris were able to accomplish together. And so he dispelled all those rumors and all the all the issues out there about he was bitter and he's upset. No, you know, what, what came across last night, two things that stood out that I never had any doubt about. His, his commitment to this country and to the Democratic Party. And there's nothing wrong, never has been anything wrong with Joe Biden's mind. I mean, he, he admits and everybody knows he has a, a, a speech impediment. And sometimes it, it, it makes it difficult. He had a couple of moments last night. There was not, there was not a lack of thought, but there were some words that he couldn't get out. That's not anything new. But look. All that aside, he was able to embrace the idea that maybe he's a little old and this may not be the time when he talked about the fact that he was too young to get elected to the Senate, but he got a Senate and now he's too old to be president. And, you know, a little tongue in cheek there. But I think what he established last night is that he's still a strong and very purposeful president and that he is 100 percent behind Vice President Harris and wants to see the good that she will bring to this ticket and the good she'll bring to the country. Yeah, and what are you hoping to see and hear from the, the other speakers and then Harris later this week? Because, um, you know, her candidacy has really energized the base. Well, uh, you know, Benny Thompson spoke to us at a reception last night, and I'll repeat something he said, that the difference in, in what Democrats are now where Republicans are, Republicans talk about the doom and gloom, how bad a shape the country is in, and, where, and look where we're headed. Uh, you know, look, look how bad a shape. Look, look, the country, the country is going to hell in a handbasket, so to speak, which is not true. Uh, but what, what I heard from Joe Biden and what I heard from Benny Thompson, what I heard from the other speakers, they want to talk about where we need to move forward and what's good about where we're going and where 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 we are on good, sound footing. And we want to keep this momentum going. And I think that's what people want to hear. And they just they don't want to just hear it. The thing that made this last night so impactful you had those three uh, young women talking about uh, their travails and the, and, and the problems they, they had and the things they had to go through with this ridiculous uh, abortion law that, that robbed women of the right to make decisions with their body. I, anybody who, who listened to that and didn't have and, and didn't have wet eyes is, is almost impossible. That was so touching. And Hillary Clinton talking about breaking and cracking the glass ceiling. And making this this is what this country has always been about freedom and the ability to succeed for all people, whether it be man, woman, transgender, doesn't matter who you are. This is a country that says if you do your best, 
if you if you care about people, if you follow those values that say treat your neighbor as you would treat yourself, then you can succeed in this country. And this country can succeed if we all do that together. And so that's what I that's what I hear. And 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 and, 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 and encompassed in that is just not the idea of it. It is how you do it. What it means, uh, as President Biden said, building a strong infrastructure. You can't create good schools and good health care if you don't have an in- infrastructure that aids in the, in the transfer of commerce and the, and the involvement in the economy. All those things. And the Democrats have understand that. Joe Biden understood that when he when he passed the, the largest infrastructure bill that Mississippi enjoys as much as anybody, even though no Republicans voted for it. And so I'm talking about things that affect people's lives. Public education, making sure that we that we embrace it and maintain it and keep it strong, uh, making sure that every man and woman in this country and every child has access to adequate health care. And those are the things we're talking about. We're not talking about, you know, people's moral values or, or how do you feel about this or or whether or not you're a good Christian or bad Christian or whether or not you, you know, that's not that's not our job. Our job as, as elected officials is to provide good public safety. Uh, uh, access to health care, good infrastructure, good public schools, and to make sure that men and women have an opportunity in this country to put a roof over their heads and take care of their families. That's Mississippi House Minority Leader Democrat Robert Johnson of Natchez. Coming up, we speak with the state epidemiologist about viral illnesses concerning the nation and protecting yourself. One is global. This is Mississippi Edition on MPB. Think Radio. I'm Dr. Jimmy Stewart, host of the original Southern Remedy, the show where I answer your medical questions. Subscribe to the podcast by searching for Southern Remedy on any podcasting app. This is Mississippi Edition on MPB Think Radio. I'm Desiree Frazier. The World Health Organization has declared MPOX, formerly known as monkeypox, a global health emergency. In Mississippi, no cases have been identified, but health officials are on alert for any signs of transmission. It's the second time in two years this virus has been declared an emergency. State epidemiologist Dr. Katherine Taylor speaks with our Shamira Muhammad about the virus as well as others. The outbreak of MPOX that went on during 2022 was what they call clade 2 MPOX. Um, clade is just a type of variant. So that clade was circulating globally, um, primarily through sexual contact. The most recent declaration of an emergency around MPOX is around clade 1 which is a different variant that tends to be more severe. It's typically endemic in the Democratic Republic of Congo and a couple of other African countries, but the risk to the U.S. in general is low. The one that's circulating in the African countries right now, it's not primarily being transmitted via sexual contact. It's sometimes contact with wild animals, sometimes household contact. And in this case where, you know, we were before seeing a lot of adults with the clade 2 with sexual transmission, in this case, in, in DRC and other African countries, there's a lot of kids under the age of 15 that are being affected. There's only been one case for clade 1 since this recent um, declaration that was a travel associated outside of Africa, and that was a case that was diagnosed in Sweden recently. So the risk to Mississippi at this point for clade 1 MPOX is very low. In fact, as far as all MPOX cases go to date in 2024 in Mississippi, we've only had one. And was that just one case with clade one or um, that includes clade two as well? That was clade two. So there's not been any diagnosis of clade one MPOX cases in the United States as of today. With the threat being so low, do you still feel that people need to protect themselves? And if so, how how do they do that? Absolutely. So even though we've not had many cases of MPOX um, declared to in Mississippi and, and nationally as well, there's not been as many, um, it is still a risk and it's still primarily being transmitted via sexual contact. And so all of the safe sex practices that people would typically need to follow for any other sexually transmitted disease, they, they apply here as well. So 
using condoms, checking with your partner to see if they have any symptoms or illness. Um, in this case, Impox does have a vaccine that is very effective at preventing cases of Impox. It's called Genius. It's commercially available now, and it's a two-dose series of vaccine. And, and really, anyone in those high-risk groups, so men who have sex with men, bisexual, transgender, or anyone who participates in sexual activities at um, events or venues would be considered eligible to get the Genius vaccine. There's been a, it seems like a slight uptick in COVID cases in Mississippi recently. Is COVID considered endemic now? Yes, COVID is very much endemic, pretty much globally. So, you know, we we ended the pandemic status, but that doesn't mean that COVID is gone. And we're still seeing sort of periodic peaks of cases. So you're right, Mississippi has been um, having some increases in COVID cases lately. Um, this is happening nationally as well. The more concerning thing to me is that anytime we have an increase in COVID cases, we also have a little bit of an increase in COVID-related deaths. And so we've seen that with this one as well. Our deaths had been very, very low. And since mid-June, we've been seeing just a few more. Still pretty low, but, you know, 10 to 15 deaths a week is still 10 to 15 people that maybe didn't have to die. Um, So, yeah, COVID is still around, still endemic, and there are vaccines to prevent it. And have the symptoms of COVID worsened? Um, No, in this this, uh, last little little bit of variant changes, we've been seeing basic cold-type symptoms. So some people have more severe disease, some people don't, but the vast majority are having fever, chills, sore throat, cough. You know, those individuals who have underlying health conditions are, are usually the ones that are more at risk for severe outcomes and hospitalization. As I mentioned, the vaccines are available and similar to the flu vaccines, the goal is really not to keep you from ever getting sick. The goal of the vaccine is really to make your symptoms mild and to keep you out of the hospital. And it does a really good job of that. And there was a reported West Nile virus death in Mississippi, though it was noted that the patient had underlying health concerns. What are the current risks of West Nile virus in Mississippi? So West Nile has been around for years. Um, and last year we had, I think, 37 cases of West Nile. This year we've had 18 cases to date. Um, when, for, when West Nile first became a concern years ago in the early 2000s, we were having hundreds of cases and nobody had ever had West Nile before. And so people were getting pretty ill with it. Um, it's endemic in Mississippi, so West Nile is kind of here to stay as well. Um, we find mosquitoes that have West Nile all over the state every year. Um, but most people that get infected with West Nile have very, very minor symptoms, if any. And so the risk in general is pretty low. Um, some people, again, they'll be more likely to have the severe outcomes. Typically, they'll have underlying conditions. But... Um, the best thing that you can do to keep from getting West Nile, whether or not you have other medical conditions, is to just keep the mosquitoes from biting you. So you know, look in your backyard, see if you've got standing water. If you do, dump it out to so old buckets or tires or you know, any place water can collect, mosquitoes can grow. And then certainly mosquito repellent this time of year is a great idea. That was state epidemiologist Dr. Katherine Taylor. Coming up, a company that collects information was hacked. Now what? We have some tips on protecting your privacy and credit. This is Mississippi Edition on MPB Think Radio. MPB Think Radio's In Legal Terms is a show all about you and your rights. I'm host Adam Kilgore. I hope you'll join me Tuesdays at 10 a.m. or find our podcast to learn about legal issues that affect Mississippi. I'm Dr. Jimmy Stewart, host of the original Southern Remedy, the show where I answer your medical questions. Subscribe to the podcast by searching for Southern Remedy on any podcasting app. This is MPB Think Radio. Mississippi is our mission.
This is Mississippi Edition on MPB Think Radio. I'm Desiree Frazier. One of the largest background check companies, National Public Data, has been hacked. Cybersecurity experts say this leak could include Social Security numbers of every American, also identifying information like names, addresses, and relatives dating back three generations. Because so much information has been released, they are also urging folks to monitor their credit scores closely and freeze them if possible. Ryder Taft is portfolio manager at New Perspectives, a financial advisory firm in Ridgeland. He's also the host of Money Talks here on MPB Think Radio. He says Mississippians should be watching their finances closely to make sure nobody is opening lines of credit in their name. It's not verified. It's not 100% foolproof. But you can check to see if your data has been breached in a variety of data breaches because there there are data breaches all the time. Uh, There are two websites. Pen Tester, P-E-N Tester uh, is one. Uh, Have I Been Pwned? Uh, That's Have I Been P-W-N-E-D. Those are two websites that uh, are fairly well recognized for this sort of thing. They give you information on what breaches your information has then been. Then they offer you plans. I looked them up. So I don't pay know. so much per month for uh, protection. Well, everyone does want to make a little money. I am not sure. I, I'm not sure if have I been pwned has a, a paid version, but a lot of times a paid or a login version will help you monitor things, um, which may be useful. And, and that's another thing to point out is that your information has been stolen. And there is this whole little industry of people who say, OK, well, now that your information has been stolen and you're worried about it, then we're going to, to we'll make some money off you of you. Look, mm-hmm. look for it and protect it. Mm-hmm. And I will say uh, a lot of times your credit card company or if you use a credit monitoring service, they will already do this sort of thing for you. They'll always have alerts for that. Um, they will, of course, have alerts if there's something actually appears on your credit report. Uh, so some of that may already be included in services you already access. Um, you just don't know for sure unless you make the calls. Yes, you would have to out. go look through all of those things. Places to check, uh, see if your bank offers it as a service, see if your credit, a lot of credit card companies offer it because they are interacting with that data uh, often anyway. So they will often offer that. Uh, if you do any third party credit monitoring or a lot of these online budgeting apps, especially the paid versions, will have some sort of. Uh, some sort of credit monitoring built in as well. What about freezing your credit, going to the credit Mm -hmm. report agencies and freezing your credit? Is that advisable? Yes. So freezing your credit, especially if you think uh, or you're concerned about somebody actually accessing your credit. So accessing your credit looks like somebody is using your social security number, possibly your date of birth and other information about you to open a credit card for themselves. Uh, They may be also using that to open a bank account or a brokerage account or something like that. And there's a lot of risks there. Uh, There's some pretty low risk things they do. Maybe they just use it to get a job. Maybe they're just using it for something very small. But you, you don't want someone using that information. With a freeze, it prevents organizations from opening up who access your credit to either verify identity or credit. It would prevent them from accessing that, so they would not be able to they would not be able to open that account for somebody else. It, even you wouldn't be able to open that account without going and unfreezing your credit. And you need to freeze your credit with the individual credit bureau, so Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. There are also, again, if you are if this is after a data breach, you're thinking about protection, checking your credit report, looking for false accounts, false applications, et cetera, always looking for missing information. That's really important. There's a lot of credit monitoring services like we talked about that do want to take advantage slash help slash make money off you in some way and offer some service to you after these. Uh, Again, Experian and Equifax, they do offer a free tier of monitoring on their own report. I really think that's the bare minimum they can do. They are a data broker. They are the ones who are holding this and who should have the responsibility to keep your information safe. At this point, with all the breaches, and you said there are plenty of them, should we just assume that our information is out there somewhere and there is really no completely safe 
way to prevent it. No means of protecting our privacy anymore. In a way, I would not put it in that in this sort of hopeless, there's nothing I can do about it. There is absolutely things you can and should do about it. But yes, your information is legitimately and legally owned by a lot of organizations. Again, National Public Data, they were an information broker. They gathered this information you know, contractually with legal contracts from, you know, completely above board from people who you gave that information to. Now, I personally think there's a lot of broken trust in that system. I personally think that organizations like data brokers, they they have so much information and they are, as far as I know, lightly regulated. And for having that amount of data and having that amount of power over people, that's that's kind of frightening to me. And that's that's also very frustrating when this sort of thing happens. But it doesn't mean that you should not be that you should be careless on the internet, and it doesn't mean that you should hide under a rock. Um, being safe beforehand, we often recommend good um, security kind of hygiene on the internet. Um, using unique passwords for every website you go to. I'm a big fan of using password managers like Apple's Keychain or 1Password. Use a really strong passcode there. Uh, Using two-factor authentication, a lot of times sending, even though it's not the best way to do it, uh, sending a text or a two-factor authentication app when you have a a second login to something. Using passcodes or pass keys, a lot of times these days, if you're logging into an app, it might prompt you to use your fingerprint or face ID, whatever you use to log into your phone to as an extra level of security to confirm that it is you on this device as very best they can tell it is you on that device who is logging in. So those are good uh, things to do always. Um, But then also, like we've talked about, monitoring your credit report. So that's where somebody, if they're opening up a credit account, that's where that's going to show up. Of course, you're only going to see that afterwards, but good to monitor that. And of course, some of these breaches involve your personal payment information. It might involve an actual credit card number, might involve an actual bank account number. Bear in mind, when you are spending money, using a credit card offers a lot of liability protection for you. It you are spending someone else's money until you pay that bill. And that gives you a lot longer. That means, one, that person, Mr. Visa or Mr. MasterCard or Mrs. MasterCard as it may be, they are the one whose money you're spending. So they'll they'll go fight for that money back. And they have a lot more clout than you. Uh, and, and also, you're not responsible for the money that's been spent on your card. There's 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 rules around that. There's time limits, um, but your liability is capped at like fifty dollars with a debit card. That is direct access to your own bank account. It can be a lot. Uh, not only can it be a lot more trouble to get your money back because again, it's your money, and you're the one who has to fight for yourself. Sure. But also, just the rules do are not as good as they are for credit cards. So checking those accounts if payment information has been breached, and then also just being smart about what accounts you're actually using. Don't have credit cards out there that you haven't used in forever and you don't don't keep track of. It's always good to kind of keep keep it nice and tidy, keep that clean. Ryder Taft is the portfolio manager at New Perspectives, a financial advisory firm in Ridgeland. This has been Mississippi Edition on MPB Think Radio.